Remember 2012, the year everyone thought the world would end? Well, it didn't. But we did get something mind-boggling. Something as complex as the knitting pattern on your grandma's blankets. Fellow movie snobs, let's talk about Cloud Atlas. A film adaptation of David Mitchell's novel, Cloud Atlas takes the six degrees of Kevin Bacon game to a whole new level. It's a celestial soup of six interwoven stories spanning over five centuries. It's definitely an ambitious story with a lot of layers to it. It's a love letter to the reincarnation theory in HD. It features actors playing multiple roles across different eras, races, and even genders. So one moment you're seeing Tom Hanks as a murderous doctor in the 19th century, and then bam, he's a futuristic goat herder. There is something oddly satisfying seeing Tom Hanks having an identity crisis on a cosmic scale, though. The creators of the spectacle budgeted at over $100 million, the Wachowski siblings and Tom Tykwer, describe making this movie as a Herculean task. And no, they weren't just trying to sound smart. They even had to direct in tandem with one shooting one part of the story while the other team was filming the other. That's a huge experiment in filmmaking that didn't seem to really pan out overall. Much of the film was financed by independent sources, making it one of the most expensive independent films of all time, an epic achievement in its own right. Cloud Atlas was a major box office disappointment, but its complex narrative, stunning visuals, and bold yet convoluted storytelling has gained it a bit of a cult following. It's proof that just like one weird uncle at family reunions, not everyone's appreciated in their time. So buckle up, snobs. We're about to dive headfirst into the cosmic jigsaw, exploring the themes of love, karma, and the university of human nature. And let's see if we can fix a movie with Hugh Grant. That's a cannibalistic tribal leader. That's something you don't see every day. What's up, movie snobs? Are you ready to take your love of pop culture to the next level? Look no further than Entertainment Earth, your one-stop destination for all things entertainment. From rare collectibles to the latest must-have items, they've got it all. Whether you are a fan of superheroes or a sci-fi lover or a classic movie enthusiast, Entertainment Earth has the perfect treasure waiting for you. But it gets better by clicking the affiliate link down in the description below, you'll get an exclusive discount just for you being our amazing viewer. And we thank you guys. Get 10% off if you click on the link below. And if you spend $79 or more, you get another 10% off and free shipping. Check it out. Take advantage of this because it is truly awesome. Each storyline in Cloud Atlas is a strong one with terrific actors, wonderful visuals, uh, you know, in the form of cinematography. Uh, visual effects, its hair, makeup, effects, and costuming are all wonderfully done. Uh, where Cloud Atlas really suffers the most is uh, how each story is interwoven with each other. Uh, you know, the editing is abrupt. Uh, it's very quick, kind of cuts between different things. You know, it seems more concerned with connecting uh, the themes and the actors to the characters throughout the errors than threading the story the right way. Overall, it lacks uh, where other good nonlinear films achieve is like a soulful connection between each story. Uh, perfect examples for movies like this, uh, you know, Pulp Fiction, Lock, Stock, Two Smoking Barrels. Um, you know, Mr. Nobody's a really good one. It's lesser known, but it's an independent film. It's really well done with Jared Leto in it. Uh, you know, it, it tackles that formula really well. Uh, the Wachowski siblings did this really well in their TV series, Sense8, you know, but Cloud Atlas just sort of missed the mark. Uh, you know, six full stories, constantly cutting between them. We never really are given a chance to spend time with, you know, anyone really to care long enough about them in each era. You know, like all the characters are just kind of like you jump between. You know, our heroes are never given a chance to win you over through their, you know, acting or, or, or just like their presence in the film. <sighs> the stories are filled with heartbreaking themes, but it feels like I find myself asking who cares because I'm not seeing it happen to them as much as I should be. That's how I feel. Uh, you know, because they're never given that chance. The characters, they never, you know, they move or move on to the story. They move on to the next story and then kind of cut back and forth and you never give that chance to sit with it. You know, the easiest fix, you know, as a movie, you know, to pick a story and stick with it. You know, there's six good stories here. Anyone could work as a movie. Um, you know, of course, some are better than others. 
or keep one of the stories from the past, you know, and you could, you know, one from the future and make it, you know, kind of, you know, a nonlinear tale that shows the themes of each experiencing throughout history. That might be an interesting kind of mirroring itself. Uh, personally, I would match like the 1936 with the composers, the, the gay composer, uh, and the 1973 with his lover now grown up. And it's, it's like this conspiracy of what's going on with the nuclear, um, you know, plant. You know, I thought that would be an interesting dynamic if you did a movie like that. You know, or, or the storyline of like 1849 with the one from 20, 2144 with me. you know, the, the slavery aspect that could play really well with those two stories off of each other. You know, um, you know, or the 2012, and, and weirdly enough, the 20, uh, 312 storyline would be an interesting one if tweaked. You know, to see London and, and at present time versus the really far future and kind of escape being the theme. You know, either you're escaping into your mind or, or escaping in the storytelling or, or whatever. I think that could be really well done. Um, but it would just have to be tweaked a little bit. You know, but that, those would be interesting. That would be something different. And you would give you a chance to, like, feel these characters and get to know them. You know, there's our fix if you want to keep a movie. But honestly, this is way too many storylines. Um, and, and my early comparison work on uh, with Sense8, it, you know, it got me thinking Cloud Atlas would probably work best as a miniseries. Maybe like an anthology one. You can still connect. You can still have connections throughout. We've seen it be done before in many, many instances. Um, you know, they could be connected in different ways. And But each character now gets a chance to breathe and, and our audience gets a chance to care for them. And really gets to, they get to shine. So to me, that that's important. You know, that'll be a fix for, for it. Um, you know. I like the miniseries idea, or you, if you wanted to keep the movie idea, you could split it up, you know, and do different things. But that would be my fix for Cloud Atlas. What do you think? Did I fix the movie? Let me know in the comments. Or uh, head over to the Discord channel. Check us out. You know, talk to us there. Let us know what you think. Uh, I would love to have the discussion with you. You know, thanks for checking out the scene snobs, and especially this episode. Uh, whether you're watching live or you're watching and listening at a later time, uh, make sure that you give this a like uh, to the video. Helps us go a long way. Hit subscribe. We have great videos coming out all the time. We'd love to hear from you. Join up on the Snobs Nation. Great group of commu uh, people. A wonderful community. Um, also, if you're listening to the podcast, and uh, make sure to follow and rate and review wherever you're listening. Uh, we're on all podcast platforms. Um, and if you want to follow us on any social media, Please, we'd love to have you. If you have any questions for um, upcoming guests or topics you'd like to see us talk about, uh, you know, or movie recommendations for the fix, uh, you know, send us a message, you know, or, or go down the description. You know, we have, uh, you know, email and stuff. You can reach out to us and stuff. But thanks for joining in uh, the Scene Snobs podcast or for this clip. In fact, uh, I love you, Snobs Nation. Be kind to each other. Stay groovy, and I'll talk to you next week. Take care. Oh,